Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to set up a uh, main stage to do some loop back live looping. Uh, it's very cool. You can uh, play along, synced with uh, tempo, uh, tempo of your effects and tempo of drum machines and uh, just set up a crazy performance environment for yourself to just go wild on. So I'm going to start out with this keyboard starter from main stage and we're going to hop up to the concert level and I'm going to get rid of this delay and this reverb just to make everything easier to look at and first step is I'm going to add a channel strip I'm going to add my loopback auxiliary uh, and it's going to input on bus 6 I'll create that yes I'd like to do it at the, at the concert level so I can use it for many different patches so here we go I get my default channel strip I'm going to take all this stuff off and then I'm going to go to uh, delay loop back and bring up my first loop back uh, instance so I'd like to sync it to whatever tempo is going on inside a main stage and I'm gonna snap to the bar that's when we're gonna start recording or stop recording and we're gonna play from the loop start and then up here I'm gonna say monitor off so that's all we need to do uh, for this nice pretty interface here we're gonna go set up our own now um, over in layout first I'm gonna grab a keyboard and that's just gonna be for my uh, controlling my my electric piano so there we go I've mapped that by pressing learn and pressing my keyboard keys then I'm also going to map a couple other things I'm going to map a tap tempo button on this little uh, drum pad thing I have so here's the tap tempo and I'm going to use this other button for uh, turning the metronome on and off Command V to have since we're going to be working with tempo and you may not always want to have a drum machine going uh, so that's what we're going to do there and um, so we're going to start uh, dragging some controls out here to represent our, our hardware that's going to control loopback um, so Let's see, first thing I'm going to do is drag out the waveform. Make it a little smaller because we don't need a massive uh, waveform display hogging up all our screen space. And I'm going to have this be a progress indicator, which is going to show you how far you are through your loop. And then I'm going to drag a couple buttons for record. I'm going to make them small, so I'm going to copy and paste these. Control C, or Apple C and Apple V. And um, just arrange those in a nice little, uh, uh, you can also say distribute horizontally. There we go, that's nice. And stick those underneath here. And then the one other thing I needed was parameter text. I'm going to display a uh, tempo of my my loopback, and then oh, one other thing I just thought of, I want um, to display something else up here, which is going to be the beat beat count, I think is what it's called. And then just to make things look nice, I'm going to drag out a background and throw that behind all this stuff so we can kind of see that they're grouped. I'm going to choose a cool panel here with the little wood ends. All right, looks nice. And then I will uh, Apple Shift G group that. Now, um, what I have on the ground in front of me is a little Behringer FCB 1010 foot controller board. And I have um, a row of uh, five buttons, two rows of five buttons. So I'm, I'm going to map the bottom row to these buttons here to, to control my loop back. And, and the way I do it, like I said in another video, is that I have multiple banks in the foot controller and so I can map those multiple banks to multiple loopbacks. So I can control, say, four different loop loopback plugins with uh, different different banks in my uh, in my footboard controller. And so I'm going to say, learn this this button, this next one. So I'm just clicking each button and then pressing the button on my foot controller, and we're mapped. So that is all I need to do there, I believe. Um, and one other little tip, once you have these arranged how you like them and small enough, which you'll probably want to even go smaller than this so you could fit a few on a screen and still have room for your 
other uh, controls. You can say add to palette, and then you can see I get uh, a new grouped control down here under this tab, my grouped controls, and I can pick an image, which I'd probably pick a loop back like that, and I'll say uh, load loop back. And then from here, I can drag out new loopbacks on there and then map them to my other banks. So I only have to go through this tedious bit one time. I can reuse it. So that's a nice new feature in uh, main stage two. So let's go to our edit. And now we need to map these buttons here to our loopback plugin. And we're still at the concert level and you have to be doing this at the concert level. Over here, we're in the concert level. This will be patch level, concert level. So click on your waveform display and you can see stereo one eight, one eight note. What does that mean? I don't know. So I'm gonna rename this to loop one, and that'll get us something a little more friendly, hopefully. What's going on here? It's not working. There we go, it's changed now. I don't know what was going on there, but um, see, it's called loop one now, and we can click this green loop back, and that is the only choice for this type of control. You can't map it to anything else, so there's just that that green type. Now you can see we have a marker, and you can um, you can change some settings on that somewhere, I think, so it, just does, so it doesn't display that, uh, that ticker bar. can't remember where that is right now, though. So let's go to... Uh, this guy right here, which is going to show progress, um, and I'm going to say loop one, loop back, uh, basic information, position, and then I'm going to map this to loop one, loop back, basic information, tempo. So the reason I want to know the tempo is because um, once you start a loop recording in here, it stays to the same tempo, so maybe you'll hit the um, tap tempo over here, and you'll go to another tempo, and you'll you'll want to see that your, your loops are at different tempos just so you can, don't fudge anything up, um, different tempos going. Uh, so now I'm going to map this first button to loop one, loop back, synchronization, oh no, sorry, transport, and I'm going to say reverse, okay, not reverse, record, come on, Sam. Uh, second one is going to be undo. And go through, and this one is going to be clear. Loop back, transport, clear. And then we're going to say stop start on this one. And then my final button is you can kind of swap it out as you like, um, but I'm going to use reverse. Okay, so this should all be set up correctly now. I have a uh, I would just want to map this to this is that that button on my on my drum pad, the Korg nano pad. And I'm going to say tap tempo. And then this guy, another button on there is going to be metronome. I believe there's metronome in here. There we go. So I can turn that off and on. So, let's see. What do we have going on right now? We have a piano and it's going it's being sent to bus one and two which i removed those so i'm just going to remove these sends and then i'm going to send this you can see we have loop one here in our it's at the concert level so it's going to be present in every patch i'm going to go to send bus and since we named it nicely loop one is there i'm going to hold down alt click and it's going to push me up to zero so i'm going to be getting a full full signal um, sent to that loop back plugin um, so now we should be set up to go. If I play my piano and I hit record, okay. So I'll stop it with my foot button and then clear it. So that's how you that's how you wipe out a loop. Um, if you just press clear, it's going to clear it and it'll keep playing. Um, and I don't think it totally resets the uh, loop size. So you'll just clear out what's in there and the current loop of like a measure or two will
will keep playing and then you hit record again and you'll be stuck with that same size so I like to press stop and then clear and that resets and wipes out the whole loop so you start with a new um, buffer I guess that, that'll that'll set to your correct uh, measure length whatever you're recording um, so let's try tap tempo turn the metronome on oh and then there's one thing I'll turn that off real quick I didn't map and it was because I did, couldn't see it. Um, and there it is. It's going to be actions and then beat count. And this is nice to know where the, where the downbeat, where the one is at uh, when this metronome's going. Because as far as I can tell, you can change the metronome. Uh, it would be nice to be able to customize it like you can in Logic using the, the Klopfgeist and uh, be able to to make it so there's a little bit more pronounced one but because all those are the same and you can't really tell where one is and I like to record on one so it so it'll sync up with um, drum machines and whatnot so um, let's try this again with the uh, metronome going and I'll try recording something so Okay, so a little hard to play right now because I'm doing all the video and the uh, sound flower and I've got a pretty big uh, latency going on, but I'll, I'll do my best here. Um, so now we have a, a metronome quick tempo going along, but that's not really uh, very fun to play along with. You'll probably want some kind of a drum loop or something. So you could use um, Playback, the new um, backing track plugin, but I'm going to show you a little trick with um, a software instrument which you should have and I'm going to give it no MIDI input um, for now and I'm going to create this at the concert level so I can use it on all my patches as well and I'm going to change my plugin to the Ultrabeat drum synthesizer uh, very cool um, drum synth which has a feature that you may not know about um, let's see if we go back to our instrument there and you can see we have our beat count going if we throw in the sequencer oh what okay we have a bit of a we got a beat going now and it's in sync with our uh, with our MIDI beat clock so um, what can we do with this um, I really didn't get too into this uh, until lately and you can store well, first of all, you have this all this mess of controls up here, which is what you normally see when you're looking at the ultra, the ultra beat. And um, this is this is probably what you're familiar with, and you might not think there's too much more until you hit this full view, and you can see we have uh, patterns in here, grid, uh, step sequencer type uh, of setup. So when you press this power on, and then it'll activate that. Okay, and then right now this is the pattern we're playing. Uh, and we've got you see these different notes here C minus one C sharp minus one well what is that that is different patterns that you can select with a MIDI note coming into this instrument so these are like the lowest keys on your keyboard so with your left hand um, you can play some beats and with your right you can throw some samples in the top and like they have basses normally in some of the presets so you could uh, kind of jam on some beats with your left hand and then play some leads over the top or some bass lines with your uh, with your bandmates, so you can go through here and change these, and you know, edit however you want them, and then I believe you have to put pattern mode on, and there's some different uh, playback modes. You can look at the, the manual for that. That's how they uh, like. For example, if you were to press the C C1 first, it would play it, and then you press it, press it again, and it shuts it off. And the other cool thing is that you can slice between all these different patterns. They don't um, they don't snap to like a measure uh, unless I think you do toggle on step one but if you do toggle you can like cut between different beats so that's kind of cool too but anyway the thing is you can go in here you can assign different patterns to different keys and then you can map your keyboard you can have a keyboard go to your ultra beat and then trigger different ultra beats using your keyboard okay so that's cool so that's what I do with my my drum pad my nano key um, or my nano pad so let's see I'll uh, just turn on drum beat and 
let's turn this off real quick. Let's see, I'll we'll pick a different one here. There we go, that's happening right there. So then you can just play along. Oh, what did I do? Got to turn the input for the drum machine to none, otherwise my keyboard is uh, going to be triggering the drum machine. Okay, so So that sounds horrible, but you get the idea. Um, you can, uh, yeah, like I said, set up uh, different uh, rhythms to be triggered from that, and then you can also set up, you know, different effects to take off and on of there, like I did in my other patch. Um, so this is this is basically it. Um, if you want to have other um, other loopbacks set up, like I said, you just um, create them in your layout, map them to the other loopback plugin, which you'll create again at the concert level. Kill that real quick. Create that at the concert level, just another loop back track just like this. Um, and you might even, to make that easier, go like uh, go like this, say save channel strip setting as loop back for Sam with my sync settings and everything how I like them. So then I can just say add me another auxiliary channel bus 7 and create that sure and then I go up here to the uh, channel strip and then I say uh, loop back Sam and I have my other loop back so once you have two loop backs set up here's how I do it I still have my keyboard set up to go to the other loop back to both of them at the same time. And that might seem kind of weird until you realize that I only record with one at a time and I normally only play one instrument at a time. So um, I just have them all set up to be every every instrument over here to be sending to all the loopers and then I just record on different loopers at different times. So that's how that works. Um, so is there anything else I'm forgetting to tell you? Um, I don't think so. Um, I have tried to uh, set up loopback with playback and to play in sync. And there are some bugs in that, but I did get a workaround from Apple, which I will uh, tell you how to do in the next installment. Thanks for listening and watching.